and go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the FIM World Sidecar Championships here from Spa Francorchamps. It's round two of seven. We've got two races this weekend. Yeah, I hope I find you well on this glorious Friday evening. My name is Luke Crane. Hopefully, you are indeed looking forward to this. It could be a really great weekend racing. I am going to keep an eye on the YouTube chat as well, so let me know where you're watching from around the world and who indeed you are cheering on. Plenty of you watching. We've got ourselves a seven lap race to kick things off this evening. And then tomorrow we have a little bit longer race, it's 11 laps. So yeah, it should be a great weekend race. And there is your pole sitters then. We've got Enesin Clement uh, currently in third position in the championship. A start at the front here at Spa, which is a great start to the weekend. As you can see there, 14 LS Clement. Everyone just waiting for the final checks to be done before we can kick things off this weekend. As you can see, the heat haze on camera. It is a very warm day in Belgium. The weather is absolutely immaculate. There is the number 34 then with the Christie's. Hannafin Racing, they start on the second row in third position. Eagerly waiting, almost like a sprinter on the back there. The number 44 then. Pavarinta and Haas for Bonovo action. They start down in fifth position. So they are on the third row of the grid. We've got the number 74 then. They're on the fourth row in seventh position. The Peugeots for 74 Racing, the French outfit. Currently sat in 11th position in the championship with one DNF last time out of the Saxon ring. They'll be looking to bounce back today. Next in our lineup then, it is the number 35. We've got Satlan Schmidt for Bonovo Action. Four-time German champ as well for Sattler. But here is your qualifying results then. So Team Ellis Clement start in P1. We've then Wickham Blackwell by Birchall Racing in second. We've got Hannafin Racing in third. Kershaw Racing in fourth position. Bonova Action in fifth. And they've got Steinhausen Racing in fifth, uh, sixth position. And uh, yeah, the graphics moving a little bit too fast for me there, as you can see. But I'm sure you can see it there for yourselves. But before we get involved with a formation lap, everybody watching on YouTube right now, let me know where you're watching from around the world. Let me know who you're supporting. Maybe you've come across this for the first time ever. Well, sit back, relax, get yourselves some refreshments and enjoy. Because this is absolutely bonkers. I can assure you of that. If there's one thing I can guarantee you, it is bonkers action. So there we go. We're off and away on to the formation lap. Heading down towards the source for the first time in race trim. So we've got Mark Baker supporting the Payne and Russo. So he's going to surprise a few people today. First sidecar race for you today, PV22. Nice, welcome. Up through Radion, in towards Eau Rouge. These machines can get up to 160 miles per hour. They are so quick. Watching them from the rear go up over Radion and Eau Rouge is something to behold. I've watched many a race car go over, the, over there, but watching these is something else. You have to have some bravery. Again, trying to get some heat into the tyres. Shouldn't be too difficult on a day like today. So the track temperature is going to be very hot indeed. down towards Bruxelles. So the cameras don't really do that hill justice. It is a long sweeping downhill circuit. The corner will disappear from you if you don't quite hit your mark in terms of turning. And we've got an early entry through No Name. So it's a slightly different variant to what you would be used to in terms of a GP layout for, for instance, Formula One. Down in towards Puan, double apex corner. And then it's the most technical part of the circuit, minus Radion and Eau Rouge, I would say. Heading down in towards 
turn 13, 14, which is Campus, and then into Stavlo, which is turn number 15. Set yourself up nicely into 16 for one of the fastest parts of the circuit, down towards Blanchimont, into that bus stop, Jacane. We know. Everybody knows Spa. It's a beautiful place. Robbie Lace there supporting Harry Penkin to see. Get the Manx flag flying. Again, seven laps around the Belgian circuit. So you see lots of marbles out there on the circuit as well. Not as cleaned up as four wheels would have done. So, yeah, very interesting to see how this plays out. You've got to be a little bit more careful, I would imagine. It's Friday as well. So the track is going to develop across the weekend, but early signs here. You just got to keep it, keep it between the mayo and the mustard. And we are good to go. Ellis and Clement then with the turquoise livery and the red nose will take up pole position. Then the Birchalls with those pink helmets will pick up second position. We've then got the Christies on the second row with Kershaw and Charlwood. We've then got Piverinter and Haas. Payne Rousseau on your third row. We've then got the Peugeots, Reeves Wilkes on the fourth. Sattler Schmidt, Stroyer and Kolsch rounding out your top ten. So final stretches here for the passengers. Riders not so much. A couple of arm stretches in the background there. A couple of lunges as well. It's hot weather. You've got to do lunges. Now we're just waiting for everybody to be good to go. The green flag in the background there is waving. Once the red flag disappears from the front, we will get the red lights appear on your screen. Remember, seven laps of frantic action. Everybody into position then. So we're about to go green light racing. There's your five red lights. We are green light racing here. And it's a very good start from the virtuals. But I tell you what. It's actually a better start from Ellison Clermont. The first phase was not brilliant, uh, but the second phase was absolutely spot on. As we go down and towards the source, there's almost a bit of contact there. The number 44 with a hand up there to say, you know what, I'm sorry about that. Did not mean to come in quite as hot there, but that was Piva Rinter and Haas. And they almost caused a, a palaver there with the Christies. As we head then towards Radion and O'Rouge, the front two have kind of got away here. Ellis Clermont and the Birchels. Birchels currently leading this championship. They found themselves in this exact position, actually, at the Sachin ring nearly a few weeks ago. But as you can see, over the top of Radion, over the top of Eau Rouge, and Ellison Clermont have made an absolute worldie of a start along that Kemmel straight, not even giving a bit of toe to the group behind. Down in towards Les Com, we will come. It's almost three wide there. The number 34 not able to make something work. And actually, the Christie's trying to go up into P2. Not quite close enough. They're almost having a bit of contact with the number 77. And really, the Birchalls have got a bit of a get out of jail free card there. They're under pressure. Uh, but ultimately, they've managed to hold on to that inside line, and they are good to go. Biggest winners, though, Ellis Clement. They are still leading here by about seven-tenths of a second. Then you've got a cluster of four sidecars just in behind. You've got the Birchalls, you've got the Christie, you've got Kershaw and Charlwood, you've got Piverinta and Haas. I think they might have dropped down, actually, uh, a little bit. Piverinta and Haas, yeah, they definitely would have dropped down a little bit. They had a little bit of contact in towards turn number one through Puon for the very first time. Again, a dream star for Ellis Clement. They have absolutely smashed this. But I tell you what, through sector number two, the Birchalls are very much closing in. So by the time we get down towards that bus stop chicane, how close will they be? Lovely close-up action then through the middle sector here, through campus, through Stavlo. And you can see the weight transfer of the passengers trying to be as far right as possible, trying to get as much downforce as possible to keep the car rotated as tight to the apex as possible. Now diving down, trying to indeed be as small as possible now to have that top end speed. As we run then through Blanchimont, I can only imagine the sensations they feel through here. It's a ridiculous corner at the best of times. As we come through there, the first race of the weekend, of course, is going to be a little bit slippier there than it will be across the rest of the weekend. Uh, and ultimately, uh, these very brave riders and passengers are doing a sensational job as it stands. But we come up towards the end of lap number one. Ellis Clement was a fantastic start, didn't get involved in the hullabaloo, and ultimately lead this race. They've got the Birchalls in behind. Championship leaders are the Birchalls. So you're expecting them to 
definitely put a charge on. Out of the first two races we've had this so far this season, they've won both of them. Uh, they've had a bit of adversity as well, where they found themselves not in the lead of a race, but ultimately by the end of it, where it matters, they've managed to get themselves in a winning position. So Ellison Clement currently P3 in the championship as it stands. Um, but yeah, in terms of the results that they had last time out, they managed to get 16 points in race one and 13 points in race number two. So yeah, two points finishes. We've got the number 34 then. That is the Christie's with Kershaw and Charlwood maybe trying to find a, an opportunity here down towards Lays Com, stalking their prey as we come then in towards Lays Com, into the breaking zone. They almost look for a little move up the inside, weren't quite close enough. Now you've got to make sure that you don't leave an opportunity for the sidecar in behind. The number 29 still rattling through down towards Bruxelles. They come, is there an opening here? Not quite the 34 will close the door as soon as it opened. And ultimately this battle for the final podium spot is still frantically going on. They've also got Reeves and Wilkes who've gone up a few positions in this. They're now up to a top five in that number 77. And I'll tell you what, they're actually going to make a move down in towards Puon. And well, by the time we even get to the breaking zone, a little bit of a nudge there. They actually have the position. Really nice stuff using the slipstream, uh, but ultimately using that inside line and we're punching their way up in towards that top four. Now looking to get onto that podium themselves. Although the number 29, maybe looking to reciprocate there within a couple of corners, not quite close enough. Uh, Payne Russo and the number 45 just in behind now. They're making this a four-way battle for the final podium position. And the front two have kind of just checked out ever so slightly. So LS Clement and indeed Birchalls are leading the way in first and second. We get a lovely replay here. Look at that number 77 with the gold helmets. Yeah, just uh, got the overspeed perfectly, nailed the corner out of no name, down towards Puan. And again, you can see them trying to make themselves as small as possible. Look how close they get their bums to the ground. You don't really want to be any closer, that's for sure. It will, uh, it will certainly be a sore sleep tonight if you get any closer. So we head down towards the bus stop chicane then for the second time. is the number 29 then, the Kershaw Charwood trying to make a move. And I tell you what, the 77 are going to just run out of road there, running a little bit deep. And on the exit of the bus stop, are they going to be under a bit of pressure? Not quite. So negotiated that well in the end. It was a mistake to start off with, uh, but yeah, it didn't work out. As we, have we lost a rider here? We lost a passenger. No, we haven't. It looked like we lost a passenger there for the number 45. Uh, as the number 29 looks for that lunge once again. And yeah, a little bit too much speed. Hits the dip there on the inside of La Source. And you lose all sense of being able to get power down. You lose the front ultimately because you get a little bit of oversteer uh, and you lose all of the momentum so maybe a little bit of respite but as we head up the wards Radion Anna Rouge once again it is still Ellis and Clement who lead the way they've actually got the uh, second sector and indeed the third sector purple uh, and indeed the Birchalls have got well it was the Birchalls who had it uh, the Christie's now have the first sector as purple so the number 29 then looking for that move on the number 77 Kershaw and Charwood down in towards Lays Com. Have to back out of it once again. And for the second lap in a row, it's just not worked out for them. But I tell you what, this cluster of three battling for that one podium position will get frantic. I can assure you it will get frantic. Front two, it's kind of stayed as it was. Ellis and Clement are looking good. Here we go. So here's the opportunity for a potential move then for the number 29. You can see there the rear was lost. The front then just moves a little bit too far. The nose then heading towards the wall. And ultimately, you need to get off the throttle completely and just basically start again. Lose a load of momentum. And yeah, it's uh, just unfortunate. Welcome to everybody who's watching over on YouTube. Nearly 500 people as well. Good to see you all here. Uh, indeed, get yourselves involved in the chat. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, Beef, my name's Luke. So yeah, nice to meet you. And hopefully you're enjoying it. Let me know who you're watching or who, who you're watching for, where you're watching from. We've got two races this weekend. So we've got another race tomorrow morning as well, uh, 9.30 uh, EU time. So, yeah, make sure that you do indeed come and get yourselves involved tomorrow morning as well. Through that middle sector we go. Again, the number 34 trying to hold on to this final podium position. The Christies, who have had an indifferent start to the season, currently seventh in the championship. But the Christies, you expect that name to be up near the sharp end. So, by the end of this championship, you absolutely will see that happen. It just is uh, just the nature of the beast. There's three Christies on our grid as well as we head then through Blanchimon. It's still the lead for Ellis and Clement, who are currently, again, P3 in the championship. This will close the gap up towards the Birchalls, but 
Yeah, the, the, the least ideal thing for our race leaders is that the virtuals are currently seconds. So they're not losing too much in terms of points. They're only losing five points. A really nice run there on the exit of the bus stop chicane for the number 77, looking to try and make a little bit of space up the inside towards the source. And I'll tell you what, it's an absolute send. Are they going to run out of room? Well, they do, but I'll tell you what, I think they might indeed have grabbed that position. It was opportunistic. Was it maybe a little bit dangerous? I'm not sure they're too worried about it because they now reside in p3 trophy time maybe for the number 77 but it slowed the group down and wow they've all checked up there's three sidecars battling for that one position the 77 have got through nicely the 34 unfortunately have lost a load of momentum there might even be a fourth sidecar coming the number 45 closing up just in behind and can kersher and chowwood potentially make themselves an opportunity for the third lap in a row they're looking to go up the inside of somebody and will it be the number 34 well very deep under braking they are going to go through through the entry of Lays Com. And by the time we come through the exit, it's a delightful bit of riding there between the two of them. Now up into P4. Brilliant stuff from the 29. They tried it three times. They learned their lessons from the first two opportunities. The third time, well, you didn't have to send them another invitation. Beautiful stuff there. Up into P4, we will go. Oh, lovely old job really good let's have a little look at the chat here we've got helen watching from england supporting the race leaders that's handy good stuff <laughs> we love this um we've got meister thank you appreciate that um we've got tip raymond supporting tim and mark we'd love to see that as well watching from england peter lots of brits in this isn't there lots of brits in this which is really cool uh you're watching from germany nice one sidecars are great i think the, they're pretty crazy on the sidecars but it's absolutely phenomenal to watch, that's for sure. Uh, we're just over the halfway point then of our first race of the weekend. But as it stands, LS Clement still lead. Birchall and Birchall are in second. We've got the Christies in third. Rees Wilkes in fourth position. Uh, although Kershaw and Charles actually did make that overtake, didn't they? So they've moved up to fourth. We've got Payne and Russo currently in sixth. Seventh position then for Piper, Inter and Haas. Uh, we've got Sattler and Schmidt. Biggs, Seegers, Archer, Christie, Stroyer and Kolsch. Holden and Midigal have all overtaken the Peugeots because they've dropped down five positions. So, yeah, Peugeot and Peugeot, unfortunately, have dropped all the way down. And they didn't have a great time at the Saturn Ring as we come up towards the bus stops again. We have got a battle for the lead, haven't we? We absolutely have. Ellison Clement then just about holding on. And why are Birchall's closing in? Well, that's because they've just gone purple. Fastest lap of the race for them. And as we head then with three laps to go, is it going to be three wins out of three so far this season for the Birchills? Or will Ellison Clement be able to hold on carrying lots of momentum then through the source but you're now punching a hole in the air for p2 it's the nature of the beast of leading at spa if you've got someone close behind you you're going to be under pressure for the entirety up through radion then towards o rouge you've got to nail this perfectly i tell you what it's a great run from the virtuals virtuals are going to close in i think here we've got third position just coming up over the crest they're under pressure as well as we come along the kemmel straight is there the potential for a move? You can see the gap getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Are we going to be close enough for a lunge? We are not close enough for a lunge. Ellis and Clement are going to live to fight another day. Just got to keep hitting those apexes now through the middle sector. You can see the, the left wheel up in the air as we head down in towards Bruxelles. And Ellis and Clement versus the Birchalls. Oh, this is going to be some weekend of racing, that is for sure. Birchalls, of course, with two wins from two so far this season. They have been absolutely perfect. Uh, in terms of uh, Ellis and Emmanuel Clement, they're reigning champions, right? They are the ones realistically to beat. They've had a P3 and a P4 so far this season. Although they do kick up a little bit of dust there, that's going to be... Well, definitely opening in the eyes of our P2 as it stands. They'll be thinking there's an opportunity here. They are flustering as we head then down in towards 13, in towards campus, which is turn number 14. The door was closed. They thought about it, but I think they realized that they might have the pace to get this done in terms of the run down towards Blanchimont, maybe along the Kemmel Strait with two to go. So we've got some frantic action a little bit further back as well. So that's the, the number... No, number five, that's a Biggs and Seegers. They lead a, a three-car battle. It looks like the Peugeots have got back up to 11th position, actually. So you can see them just about coming through. And actually, they've moved up into 10th, I think. So the Peugeots now coming back through. Must, they must have made a mistake. It's definitely not anything to do with damage or uh, potential knock with anybody. 
I think they might have just made a mistake and just dropped down because they are coming back through very quickly indeed. Here's your battle for the race lead. Ellison Clement has said you're going to have to go around the outside. And I tell you what, it's a fake from the Virgils. They've then sent it up the inside. They're going to run out of road. And I tell you what, on the exit, we're going to have a switch back and they are going to be side by side. And Ellison Clement are going to say thank you very much. We will have that. Two to go. And maybe, maybe we're going to see a couple of changes for position. Here is the battle for P3 as well. Reeves and Wilkes held on to it for that lap number five. But I tell you what, the over and under attempt there has absolutely been nailed. Kershaw and Charlwood for two laps in a row have made a very significant overtake. They went into fourth position and now they're in third. A little bit of door banging. I say door banging. There's no doors on these, but you know what I mean. And I tell you what, down towards Radion, they are side by side. And while Kershaw and Charlwood just had to back out there. You've got two laps. Just get yourselves in a position to maybe make a move. Don't do anything too crazy that could potentially end your race. And well, just in the background there, if it wasn't enough to have a two-way battle, we've also got ourselves the number 34 of the Christies coming through. And I tell you what, Piverinta and Haas, Piverinta, four-time champion, remember, well, also wants to try and get involved. This is officially for the podium. Four sidecars battling for the podium. Two sidecars battling for the race victory. Whoa. We want more laps here. It's only seven laps. This is absolutely ridiculous stuff. Then down in towards Bruce Ailes, the number 44, looking for a snifter of an opportunity. Not quite close enough to make anything happen. Patience at this stage of the race is absolutely vital. If you make a mistake, you're going to drop a load of positions. You're going to lose a lot of points. Sometimes it's worth taking solace in the position you're in. Take it home. Grab those guaranteed points and move on to tomorrow. But the fact that you've made a decision to be either a sidecar passenger or a rider means you're willing to take risks. I tell you what, that's a risky move there, and it's a perfect move. It is a change for the lead. The Birchalls do lead. They're looking to make it three race wins from three this season. We then go straight back to the battle for the final podium spot as the number 77 have, well, they've retaken the spot effectively. The 34 momentarily went up into what would be P3, uh, and now they've dropped back down. Uh, the Birchalls now do indeed lead this race. So there is the swap of positions, 77 and 34. And well, we have now got ourselves Reeves and Wilkes into P3 as we head then down towards the bus stop chicane. We've got one more lap remaining. And I tell you what, the Birchalls, they've actually made a gap here. They've timed this beautifully well. If they've realized they've had the pace all this time, well, they've done it at the perfect opportunity. They've now started to gap the field a little bit, both of the front two sidecars. The number 34 absolutely sends it up the inside. The 77 uh, in Reeves and Wilkes closes the door on the exit, which means they just cannot get that power down, uh, thus blocking the number 34. And, well, here it is. Final lap, final chance saloon or last chance saloon is three wide battling for that final podium spot who wants the trophy on a friday night who wants to make the beer taste sweeter as the number 34 sweeps underneath of the 77 that is another change for the podium positions with less than one lap to go and this is the battle for the gold p1 can the virtuals hang on or can the reigning champions ellis and clement make an overtake it would be three wins from three for the for the virtuals well, Ellis and Clement need to get their championship, well, going. Simple as that. A race win here is an absolute minimum for them as we head up towards Lace Com. And it's a beautiful move to send up the inside. You know, the Birchers aren't going to panic here. They are absolutely just going to sit in behind and wait for a potential mistake. But then also look to make a move down towards the bus stop chicane. Merely a few corners to go of our first race of the weekend down in towards Bruxelles, hugging that apex are our race leaders. A little bit of a mistake there from the Birchalls. If we then come through no name, the group of four behind again, battling for that podium position. You can see the graphic at the top of your screens, ladies and gentle cars. It is final lap time, of course, through Puon. We will come. Ellis Clement back up into the lead. Of course, they were your pole sitters, but they have not had it easy. That is a fact. They have not had this easy at all. Look at the virtuals they are so so close right now as we come down in towards campus and against stavlo for the very final time today i love the helmet design there on the virtuals as we come once again a little bit further back the second group of sidecars and they'll also want to put themselves in the position to pick up any pieces if there's some contact between the front two but as it stands it is the number 77 reeves and wilkes who would get that final podium spot and that final trophy 
And now it's on to one of the fastest parts of this circuit. Do the Birchals have one last punch to throw? Or will it be the reigning champions picking up their first win of the season? Ellison Clement come out of Blanchimont beautifully well. But look at the slipstream. Look at the gap closing up. It's going to force them to go around the outside. The Birchals, though, decide not to do it. And now are they going to be looking to try and get the perfect exit? I tell you what, it's not going to work out here, is it not? Well, Ellison Clement have gone through there relatively slowly. It's going to be enough, though, as we come up towards the line. It's almost a photo finish, but it is a race victory for Ellison Clement. Birchals do take peace too an incredible battle between two incredible teams and i tell you what reeves and wilk picks up the final podium spot and the punch in the air you can see exactly how much it means the celebrations are wild not only with the riders and passengers but the marshals getting involved as well and i'm sure they'll all share a beer together this evening but the gold belongs to ellison clement for race one this weekend incredible stuff Reigning champions, P3 and P4 at the Sashen Ring. Didn't go quite so well for them there. Birchall, the team of Birchalls picking up both race victories. So really to get their championship back in order, they needed to come out here and win. And well, they have done. Ellis and Clement do pick up the race victory. There is your official race classification. Team Ellis Clement pick up P1. Wickham Blackwell pick up P2. Bonovo action in third. Hannafin Racing. And then we've got Kershaw Racing as your top five. Oh, that was a that was an interesting race, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you enjoyed that watching on YouTube. And again, let me know where you're watching from around the world. Always good to hear from you. Always good to hear from you. As we're just getting the final classified riders through. So Cable and Richardson have crossed the line then. We've uh, got Kim Zwinger and Sadler, uh, Sadlercheck. Vinette and Pirat have indeed crossed the line. Uh, Lagoon and Daras are not going to be classified. Arms up in the air, still so much excitement. Lots of people. Peter Enzel there supporting Todd and Emmanuel. Same as Raymond. Oh, there's so many. There are so many fans for Ellison Clement in the YouTube chat. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff indeed. So there is your race winners. The day belongs to Ellison Clement. Bert Schulz finishing in second and Reason Wilkes rounding out your podium. That was race one for the weekend. Should we do it again tomorrow morning? I think we will. I'll see you tomorrow morning, guys. Again, so the overall classification, ladies and gentlemen, is indeed uh, number six, Team Ellis. Come on, picking up the victory. Uh, Wickham Blackwell by Birchall picking up P2. Bonovo Action and Hannafin Racing third and fourth position. Uh, we then had Kershaw, Bonovo Action, Steinhausen Racing, and Bonovo Action again as your top eight. Uh, 74 Racing Team, Struer Racing, Hannafin Racing, Barnes Racing, Biggs Racing uh, are indeed in there as well. Uh, 
But it just moves far too fast for me. Absolutely far too fast for me. LNW Racing picking up P14. We have MRSC, uh, Gunstricken SRT as well. Classified Tim, uh, Team Vinet Racing uh, also there. And in the final classification, it is Team uh, Laguin as well. Right, we're going to do it again tomorrow. I promise you we'll be back. It's going to be great fun uh, as much as this. And the beauty of tomorrow is it's a little bit longer. So until then, have a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll see you tomorrow morning.